Welcome to another Earth Science Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Buss. And this podcast, we're going to talk about atmospheric circulation. So, as the sun shines down on the planet, the sun heats the surface of the Earth, which in turn heats the atmosphere, the air above it, in the troposphere. And so that warm air rises. Basic principle of the air molecules are spreading out as they gain energy. And as that air rises, it is going to start to cool, and it's going to come back down to the surface of the planet, and then it's going to warm up again on the surface of the planet, and it's going to warm up again, and then it's going to come back down because it's going to cool, and that is a basic convection cell that we see in the troposphere. So to understand what's actually happening on the Earth, let's imagine a highly simplified model of the Earth, where you basically have a non-rotating Earth, which is not what we have, but let's just imagine. And so you're seeing that the sunlight is coming most directly to the equator, and so the equator is experiencing uh, warming, and so the air is rising at the equator, and then it's going to deflect off either to the North Pole, or it's going to deflect if it's in the Southern Hemisphere to the South Pole, and you're going to have two gigantic convection cells going along from the equator to either of the poles. You also have to imagine for the purpose of this that there are no continents or uh, differences on the surface of the planet anywhere. It's just a smooth surface everywhere. Here's just another picture <clears throat> showing the same thing. Uh, you have the equator here and so that's where the most direct sunlight is going to be so you're going to get uh, heating uh, the surface of the earth there and then so you're going to get these massive convection cells moving hot air north and then cold air or south, and then cold air back to the equator. All right, so now let's rotate the Earth and see what happens. We'll rotate the Earth in this direction, which is appropriate. And so what's going to happen to the atmospheric convection? We're going to notice that it's going to look like air traveling southward from the North Pole will deflect to the right. And air traveling northward from the South Pole will deflect to the left. This might be easiest to understand if you think about it um, from the point of view of an airplane flying from the North Pole uh, south to a city near the equator. So imagine an Earth that rotates, which it does, and imagine the airplane leaves and flies directly south. Well, instead of landing, if it flies directly south, instead of landing at a, at a point on the equator directly south of it, it's actually flying south, but as it's flying south, the Earth is rotating, so it's going to deflect um, to a city that is actually to the west of, of where it had intended, unless it actually, as it flies, as the airplane flies, unless it actually angles the plane so that it, it, can, it can actually steer it and to try to fly where it's supposed to get to um, as the Earth rotates away from it. All right, and so as if that wasn't complicated enough, it gets one step more complicated. <laughs> Interestingly enough, we don't see one gigantic convection cell in the north and one gigantic convection cell in the south, we actually see three identical convection cells in the north and south. So we have a Hadley cell. So air that rises at the equator is going to deflect off to the north in the northern hemisphere and to the south in the southern hemisphere. And it's only going to make it as far as 30 degrees north or south. And that air which rose as warm, humid air and then precipitated out is going to fall as dry warm air. And so that's where the, a lot of the Earth's deserts are at those 30 degree north and south latitudes um, because the warm air is also dry. And then the air is going to return to the equator, warm, and then go through the Hadley cell convection. The feral cell is between 30 and 60 degrees north and south. And the polar cell is at either the North Pole and the South Pole. So here's the same thing, just a different way to look at it. Hadley cell, convection, feral cell, and then polar cell. And the same thing again, These just, it's just interesting to check out the different pictures, different ways to visualize this. Here's the equator right here. Hadley cell, feral cell, and then the polar cell. And again, here's the equator. Hadley cell, Hadley cell, feral cell, feral cell, and then the polar cell, and then the polar cell. At the point where the Hadley cell uh, comes across the other Hadley cell, so the northern Hadley cell comes across and meets the southern Hadley cell, that's called the 
uh, doldrums or the ITCZ, which is the intertropical convergence zone. And that's where we see warm air rising at this point. It is warm, it is humid, and you're going to get a lot of rainforests in this region right at the equator, obviously. Where the Hadley cell, and we'll just look in the northern hemisphere, where the Hadley cell comes across and meets uh, the feral cell, you have air that is descending. And the air is warm because it was warmed at the equator, but it's also dry. It's already rained and precipitated. And so this is where the world's deserts in general are located at 30 degrees north or south. Cool air is descending here and warm air is descending here. It's cool if it came from the feral cell and it's warmer if it came from the Hadley cell. And where the feral cell meets the polar cell, that you get a jet stream there. Um, trop jet stream flows west to east. We'll talk briefly about uh, high pressure belts. High pressure is when you get descending air. So you get descending air here as the air is coming down and crashing down on the earth. That is high pressure. Um, low pressure is caused by air that's rising. The air is leaving the earth here so that the pressure is low. And again, you're looking at why, why, what's the deal with these circles here? Well, it's, it's again because of that, the, the rotating earth. The air is deflecting and then it's returning and then it's deflecting because of the fact that the Earth is rotating. It's the Coriolis effect. Now hopefully that video on the last slide worked for you. I'm still learning how to do all this stuff. Uh, so um, feel free to pause this slide if you need to write this down. But um, Hadley to Hadley cell, again, I've already said this, but um, that's at the equator, right? And that's called the doldrums. Um, sailors find it hard to cross here because air is moving up instead of across. That makes sense also called the intertropical convergence zone. So, warm air rising, humid. Yeah, there's just a close-up. Yep. Feel free to pause this one if you need to, too. Hadley to Feral Cell, called the Horse Latitudes. Again, that's 30 degrees north and south. Sinking air, high pressure system. Major deserts around this area, because, uh, you know, it already rained. The precipitation from the warm, humid air is already left. Again, called the horse latitudes, and you can see Earth's deserts there, right? Here's the equator. Here's the intertropical convergence zone. Warm air rising, humid. So the warm air rises at the equator, and it rains, and then the warm air, which is now dry, falls, and there's your deserts. All right, and finally, at 60 degrees, latitude north and south, you do get rising air again as the feral cell hits the polar cell. Um, there's a polar jet stream there, subtropical jet stream there that I, for I forgot to mention. All right, and, uh, yeah, there's that. All right, hopefully that, this podcast made sense and I'm going to call it good and, uh, have a good one.